What's up everyone, Andrew Bainer here, and today I will be reviewing the NK Headless Guitar. I'm giving this guitar away for free to one lucky person. If you missed my contest and announcement, please be sure to go check that out now. There is a card on the screen linking to that video. But without further ado, before we get into the review, let's hear how this thing sounds. Here we go. Alright, so for those of you that are unfamiliar, this is pretty much the cheapest headless guitar that you'll ever find on the market, or at least the cheapest headless guitar I've ever seen. Um, and it's also not a knockoff, it's not a copy of someone else's brand, which is something that's very important to me. There's a lot of fake Strandbergs and fake Kiesels and fake Mayones, all that stuff, all over the place, and I do not support um, copying other brands builds especially when they try and pass it off as the original I am not about that life so for sub $300 you can get this thing which does not claim to be a copy of anything it is its own design the brand is called NK guitar and this is the NK headless luminous guitar so I ordered this guitar from Aliexpress which is kind of like a Chinese t eBay type website I guess is the best way you can describe it um, so yeah, it was on sale for I think it was like $290 US or something like that. I'm in Canada, so of course that's about $350, $360 for me, plus shipping and duty and all that stuff. I think it ended up being about $400 Canadian, which again would be like just over $300 American, give or take. So from the time I placed my order of this guitar to the time I got it, I think was about three weeks. Um, weirdly enough, when I placed the order, it actually took... I think it was like two weeks before the guitar shipped out. Uh, but then once the guitar did ship out, it was here within like four or five days, which I thought was insane. So for some reason, like the actual ordering process took a while. I'm not sure if like maybe this wasn't in stock and they were finishing it up. I have no idea. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I got it last Friday. So about a week ago today. Um, overall, I'm pretty, pretty impressed. Uh, if you watched the other two videos I made about this guitar, I kind of said in those videos that I was, I was pretty impressed, um, but I wanted to do a more fair review of this guitar because obviously, you know, when you get something brand new, you're always pretty excited about it. Well, I mean, if it's good, you're pretty excited about it and you could kind of like overlook certain things because you're stoked. So I wanted to give it a little bit of time before I did a real review. So this is that review now, basically is what I'm trying to say here. Um, yeah. So overall, still pretty happy with this guitar. Um, again, with every critique and comment that I make, keep in mind that, again, it was less than $300. So it's definitely not made to be the perfect guitar. It's not made to be the best guitar ever. It's made to be something that's $300. And 
I still believe, um, after having this for a week, that it's pretty much better than any other $300 guitar that I have personally played at the local music store, which would be like, you know, like the Ibanez Geos or like the cheap Schecter Sound Gears, um, the cheaper Jacksons, all that good stuff. Uh, so this, in my opinion, is still a little bit better than those. Um, these stock pickups are actually way better than I thought they were going to be. Um, they're a lot better than other stock pickups I've played, again, in other brands of uh, cheap $300-ish guitars. Um, so pretty happy with these pickups. Even has like a coil tap feature, which I did not use in the demo, but it does sound pretty good. Um, if you've ever heard what a coil tap sounds like, you know exactly what it's going to sound like, so I'll leave that to your imagination. Um, other than that, yeah, the pickups I was really, really impressed with. Um, the second thing I was super, super impressed with is actually the fret work. Um, the frets are not sharp at all, and usually on cheap guitars, that's like a huge issue is you get sharp fret ends, um, which kind of sucks because, you know, when you play guitar, you don't really want to have little uh, metal frets stabbing your fingers, obviously. So I'm happy to report after a week of playing, still no sharp frets, so that is good news. Um, there's also glow-in-the-dark side dots and uh, inlays on this guitar, which seem to work pretty well. I have inlays, or sorry, I have glow-in-the-dark inlays on two of my other guitars, and these seem to work exactly the same way. I don't really notice a difference between these and the ones I have on my other ones. So I doubt these are like the Luminlay brand, but whatever they're doing is basically the same thing, and it works, so good for them. The third thing I want to point out that I really like about this guitar is this little, it's not technically a headpiece because it's headless, but this thing at the top here is really cool because you put the ball end in the top like so. You probably, it's probably not going to focus on that properly, but yeah, so the ball end of the string goes here, you pull it in, snip it about like there, and then it winds around this little uh, cylindrical thing here. Pretty cool. Um, I thought that this was a really ingenious design. Um, I've never seen any headless guitar that has something like this on the top, so I thought that was very interesting. However, there is a problem with it. And the problem is, um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this on camera, I'll try, but basically when you put the string through this little headpiece, um, the fretboard is actually higher up than the, the angle at which the string goes in. So if this makes any sense, it's really hard to explain, but basically when you put the string in, the end of the string hits the fretboard and it basically gets stuck. And you have to kind of like fish around with, I used like a tiny little knife or like you could use a pen or something like that. And you basically have to like kind of pry the string up and over the fretboard and over the nut, which is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, when you restring, I mean, you don't restring that often, so it's kind of whatever, I guess, but it is pretty annoying. Um, I restrung this like two or three times just to test it out. And yeah, I definitely noticed that. It's definitely super annoying. Um, I have a feeling it's also going to wear down this little wood part that holds the nut up fairly quickly, depending on how many times you change the strings. The second thing I don't like about the guitar is the bridge piece is just super weird. I mean, it works well enough. It seems to hold a tuning fine but the way you tune it is just so annoying in my opinion um like on most headless guitars you have thumb tuners where you can just do that and tune up very easy like my vader has that i think every other headless guitar i've ever seen has that but for some reason on this bridge design you can't really twist it with your thumbs or your thumb and your fingers i should say um, i mean you, you kind of can but it's very very difficult like it's definitely not made to be turned by your hand so they actually give you this little tool that magnetically clips into the bridge, which is kind of cool how they did it, but it's very cumbersome after you use it like the first time, it kind of loses its coolness. Um, so basically, there's a little thing here, you pull it out, and it gives you this tiny little, I don't know if you can see that, but it's basically like a tiny little Allen key. Um, so it gives you this little device, and like you put it in the screw, and it gives you, it makes like a little makeshift crank, and then you crank the tuning peg to get the string in tune, which is really annoying because for most people, well, especially if you have a right-handed guitar, this is how you pick. So you can't really like pick and tune. You have to like kind of flick the string with this finger and then use this little device to crank the other side. It's just super weird. I mean, like it's, it's, it's cool in a way because it's different and I've never seen it before. But uh, yeah, after you use it once or twice, it's just kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. So the last thing I want to talk about on this guitar is basically just the overall finish and feel. Um, overall, the finish is actually 
probably one of my favorite parts of the whole guitar. Um, it's definitely not a perfect finish, but it's really, really good. I have never personally had a guitar that's like this where the finish is so thin that it doesn't actually fill in the wood grain. Obviously you can't really see the texture through a camera, but all these areas where you can see the wood grain through the paint, if you, you can actually feel the wood grain and it's really cool. Um, I didn't even know it was going to be like that when I ordered it. I just kind of assumed everything was going to be filled in with like epoxy or something like that. But pretty cool, pretty interesting design choice to do that. Um, I like it personally. The back of the neck is also finished green on the maple neck here, um, which again, kind of cool. Doesn't really do anything, it's just for looks. Um, it's a satin finish, which is great because gloss back of neck finishes uh, are the worst, so I'm glad that it's satin. Um, there's obviously a couple areas where the finish kind of bleeds a little bit onto the bare wood. Um, but again, it's a $300 guitar, so it's kind of whatever, not a big deal. Um, I didn't really notice any like huge gaps in the neck pocket or anything like that. Everything seems to fit like pretty nicely. Um, this back plate here mostly fits. I mean, it's clearly not cut exactly correctly, but again, it's the back plate of the guitar and it's a $300 guitar. It really doesn't matter that much. I haven't popped it open to look inside to see if like the wiring is good, but I'm going to assume, you know, it, it works. So it's, it doesn't really matter if the wiring looks good on the inside. It seems to be working fine. Um, another thing I like about it is the input jack is kind of hidden at the bottom there. You can kind of see. So if you look from the top, the input jack is actually there. Like it's hidden by the top wood, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so overall, still pretty happy with this guitar. I think whoever wins it will be pretty happy with it. Um, the only thing is, like, they probably will need to take it in for a setup, depending on what gauge of strings they get. Um, one thing I noticed is the high E string on the open high E. Like, it's clearly ringing, or sorry, it has a lot of fret buzz, I mean. I think it's the first fret right here, though, because if you play... If you play any other fret, it seems to be fine, but just that open fret. So I think either the neck truss rod needs to be adjusted a tiny bit, or maybe this nut was cut a little bit too low, something like that. If you take it into a guitar tech, I'm sure they can figure it out, no problem. Um, all the rest of the strings were perfectly fine. Yeah, that's, that's really honestly pretty much all I have to say about it. I think that whoever wins this will be pretty happy. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm almost decided to give it away because I think it's a fun guitar to play around on. Um, I've been using it as much as possible before I send it out over the past week, I mean. Um, and yeah, overall, you know, I know a lot of people are kind of like skeptical of AliExpress. They kind of assume they're going to be bad. I definitely uh, was also prepared for the worst when I bought this, to be honest with you. I've seen a lot of horror stories of people getting stuff from AliExpress or getting stuff from a, a Chinese guitar builder and it ends up being terrible. Um, but that was definitely not my experience this time around. So would I recommend someone buy this if they need a $600 or sorry, a $300 guitar um, and they want to try headless for the first time, but don't want to go big for like a Vader or something like that. Yes, absolutely. I would recommend this. Um, I do not feel like any penny of my money was wasted on this. $300 feels totally appropriate for what you get, if not a little bit low for what you get. Um, yeah, overall, very happy. So that'll do it for the review of this NK headless guitar. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I will try to answer them the best that I can. And this is the last time you're ever gonna see this guitar because once again, I am giving this away. If you have not entered my giveaway yet, be sure to check in the description below and also a card on the screen to enter the giveaway. It's super easy. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel, comment on my giveaway video, and also subscribe to StringJoy's channel. StringJoy is also hooking it up and giving giving away 10 free packs of guitar strings along with me giving this away. So you'll get 10, 10 packs of strings and a brand new guitar. So if you have not entered the giveaway, please do so. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, I look forward to reading your comments and I will see you guys on the next video.